Hello everyone. In this example, we are factoring a quadratic trinomial. And in this particular quadratic trinomial, which is a polynomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, most specifically actually, this power, I'm gonna call it two, not just two, but two, let's call it two m. And we're gonna call that power m. Really, we can call anything a quadratic type so long as this exponent on the x on the leading term is double that exponent, and it is because this guy right here is a little invisible one. And here we have really an x to the zero, which is equal to one, not x to the one. Don't get it twisted. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and factor this right here. Now, in the next example, I go through the long, um, proper way AC method with full blown grouping. In this example, I'm gonna try um, to mess with it a little bit more to kind of show you a little bit more of the shortcut -y way. Um, but please refer to the next video if you need more support with the actual factoring method, okay? So we're going to factor, it's an expression, it's not an equation, you're not solving. If you were solving, you would still either factor or you can use quadratic formula. It's up to you. So I'm gonna start it like the AC method with grouping. AC is the product of the A and the C, in this case, three and negative six, and that's gonna be negative 18. Obviously, if you don't know your times tables, you're off to a rough start and you're gonna have a hard time on the rest of the examples, right? So from here, we make our list of factor pairs. So in this example, it's one and 18, two and nine, please take your time, don't go crazy, and three and six. And that's the full list. And we wanna ask ourselves, is there a pair of numbers on this list that if I play my cards right, I can make a negative seven from them? And it does look pretty good. If I multiply two numbers and get a negative, that means I have one negative number and one positive number, I promise, that's the rule. If B is negative, that means the larger of the two numbers is also negative. I explain this in more detail in the next example. So I'm gonna have a negative nine and a positive two. Think about it, draw yourself a number line. I don't know what to do, count on your fingers, make up a situation, make sure you're right. These two numbers we usually use when we do AC method with grouping, we usually use these two numbers to split the middle term. This time though, I'm going to use those two numbers for my outer and my inner. So let's kind of take a look-see, right? So I have my parentheses right? Hypothetical situation over here. You're going to have your first times first would be from that. We can have your outer, which is this times this. You can have the inner, which is this times this. And we can have, what other color will show up nice on camera? Um, I think this one, inner, and last is this times this. Now, the interesting thing about when you FOIL is you often, when you FOIL back in the beginning of, of algebra, if you FOIL or distribute a binomial by a binomial, what would usually happen is your outer and inner, the two middle pair, uh, terms, would combine and make this middle term, right? However, the last times last, that right there, last times last, right? That kind of just is what it is. It's negative six, right? Something times something will give you negative six. No tricks and sneakiness at all. Similarly, over here, right? My first times first, first times first, well, that straight up gives you 3x squared. Again, no funny business. But it's that outer and inner situation that kind of messes people up. So a couple other little hacks. If this is a subtraction in front of your C, okay, that's a minus. When all is said and done and you factor it, you'll have one negative and one positive. If this is plus, then both signs are going to be the same and they will both be whatever the B is. 
Write that down, think about it, and compare it to things you already did or that you're about to do. All right, so when I factor a quadratic trinomial, we usually end up with the double bubble like this, binomial times a binomial. I'm gonna cheapen this up here. If I have a prime A or C that's nice, that's a nice place to start. Are either three or negative six prime numbers? Three is a prime number. What times what, if this is factorable, what times what is three X squared? I can't just do X and X because X times X is X squared, but three is prime. That means the only thing we can use is three and one. So that can be three X right here, first times first, will be 3x and x, and that does in fact give me 3x squared. You wanna put the one there, you put the one there. Now six is prime. These spots here can be two and three, or three and two, or one and six, or six and one. We have four situations already, but let's narrow it down. How do we narrow it down, you may ask? Well, with the two and the negative nine. My outer, and my inner will be the 2x and the negative 9x. Should my outer be 2x or negative 9x? Should my inner be 2x or negative 9x? If it doesn't matter, you might have a GCF on your hands that you should have addressed right away. But it should matter, especially because we have that 3 there. Outer because I already have the three, right? Outer, that times, is it, what color did I use for outer? Nope, that's not what I used, not orange. Outer, I used blue. So this times this, I want that to be negative nine X. I want my outer to be negative nine X, why? Well, I already have negative three, um, or three X rather. So what does that need to be in order for outer to equal negative nine X? That would need to be negative three. Now we're constantly building off the last clue. There's your negative nine X. The first times first is three X squared. That's sort of written in stone. Now this guy's also written in stone. Last times last is gonna be negative six. Last times last is going to be negative six. I already have negative three. What does this need to be in order for my last times last to be negative six? Positive two. This should bring all of your final clues together. Your inner, your inner, right? This times this is inner, gave me positive two X. The outer gave me the negative nine X. If I FOIL and combine, I'll get negative seven X for the middle term. Last times last is negative six. That's also something we said should be happening. What else did we say? We said if this is negative, when it's factored, you'll have a positive and a negative in your parentheses. So we are in pretty good shape. So there's your inner. The green right here was my last times last. That's looking pretty good. Blue is my outer and so on. That's it, you're factored. If you wanted to do this using grouping, it works as well. If you don't believe me, take this right here, 3x, that's a parenthesis, it's pretty straight, sorry. 3x plus two and x minus three, and use FOIL to check if you get back the same thing. 3x times x is 3x squared. Outer, negative 9x. Inner is plus 2x. Last times last is negative six. What does that do? Don't put an equal sign, it's an arrow. Don't turn it into an equation. 3x squared minus 7x minus 6. We did in fact get back the original expanded form. That's called expanded form. And we have our factored answer. This is called factored form. 3x plus 2 times x minus 3. Of course, the two parentheses are interchangeable, but the inside of the parentheses must be as they are. And uh, I hope you like that shortcut. Please don't wait until a test to try it. Please test it out when you're studying, all right? Click through for the next example, which I work out fully with AC method and grouping, and uh, hope you feel smarter. Thumbs up if you do, thumbs down if you don't. Adios.